we're back with a paleontology video. Oh, jeez. This video is called 15 Reasons Why the Red Megalodon is 100 Times More Dangerous Than the Megalodon. Red Megalodon again. Didn't I already review one earlier? Do I have to do it again? He who should not be named. Or he who should not be forgotten. In the murky depths of prehistory, a true leviathan ruled the oceans. A predator of unmatched scale and terror. So much is going on already. This is absolute madness, bro. The Megalodon and his rare crimson cousin. Dude thinks the red Megalodon is 100% real. From what I've heard of, this video is super dinosaurs level bad. <laughs> So, yeah. We're in for a ride today. The Red Megalodon. Dominating the waters for years, these colossal creatures have left a legacy of terror that still haunts the water. So, let's dive into the journey of exploring their immense size, voracious hunting techniques, and the intriguing enigma behind their dramatic extinction. At least the dude said that these Megalodon stuff went extinct. Hopefully this guy does not say, there still could be megalodons lurking around in the deep water. Let's start off the video with the question that's been on everyone's minds recently. Is the red megalodon real? No. 100% no. No explanation needed. One thing we need to get straight is that the existence of red megalodon is definitely, surely plausible. No. This is already turning into a stupidly horrible paleontology video. At least this guy gets straight to the point. Reason number one, there had been a recent discovery. You're just getting to reasons why the red megalodon could have existed instead of reasons why the red megalodon is more dangerous than the megalodon. Those two are different topics. Of a huge red tooth. That could have just been fossilized. Found off the Meharan River. Situated in the United States, this river is known for the exquisite remains of colossal creatures found in its depths. Reason number two, scientists have mutually agreed on the fact that because these majestic mechs roamed the earth millions of years ago, they so far have only discovered teeth and a few vertebrae. What is even happening in this video? It's getting really fake but um, okay. So, is this guy getting straight to the point here? Honestly, not that, now that I said it, I'm not exactly sure now. <laughs> there is a 100% possibility that Megalodon was much more than we've perceived, which makes the Red Megalodon's presence quite believable. If the Red Megalodon truly existed, then the Red Megalodon would be in a very disadvantageous position because the Red Megalodon can't really camouflage well. Also, so far you haven't said anything about why the Red Megalodon is more dangerous than the Megalodon. Wait! There's another recently discovered fact that you would not want to miss. One thing we all know is that the majority of sea predators, especially sharks, are ectothermic. Well, that was not the case with these ancient rulers. After analyzing isotopes in the tooth enamel of the ancient shark, they discovered that megalodons could keep their body about 13 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the water they swam in. Facts that have nothing to do with the title itself. It's just turning into a bright side at this point. Take back everything I said and just expect this to be another bright side-esque paleontology video. In comparison with the rest of the sharks that lived alongside him, this difference was large enough to recognize them as warm-blooded animals. These endothermic predators belong to a species of sharks called mackerel sharks, which makes them the ancestors of modern-day threshers. These sharks are the ones that have managed to maintain a body temperature warmer than the surrounding water. Unfortunately, there is no specimen that shows any descendancy from the megalodon. There was another theory suggesting that the great white sharks were the real descendants of them. Which couldn't be farther from the truth. Does that mean that actual megalodons were only a beefed up version of great whites? I'd say no. 
It is true that Great Whites are believed to be the lineage of Mex, but- No, that is- that narrative is completely and utterly false. They're not direct ancestors or descendants of each other. Instead, they share a common ancestry and belong to the same shark family known as the Lamidae family. No, the Megalodon did not belong to the Lamidae family. Instead, the Megalodon is part of the Lamniformes order. As of current paleontology standards, the Megalodon belongs to the Otodontidae family. And despite their similarities due to their shared ancestry, they are actually distinct species with distinct differences in size, behavior, and habitat. All three of these characteristics were what made the Megalodons the behemoths we call them today. But how do we know all of this from just a tooth? It's because the scientists not only discovered a few hundred of them, but they recovered thousands of Megalodon jaws from around the globe. And to measure its size, they simply calculated the tooth row length from the side of the jaw. There's still no mentioning of why the quote-unquote red Megalodon is 100 times more dangerous than the Megalodon. This is absolutely bad already. And there we had it, the size of the Great White Megalodon. Double the size of a big school bus. The Megalodon is supposed to be built more robustly than the Great White Shark because the Megalodon is just so huge, it has to maintain its weight. And three times the size of a Great White Shark. Three times the length, not three times the size. So what did it actually eat to make it the monster it was? It's an animal. The Megalodon is an animal and you're just, it's just edited. I feel like you're just making excuses for the quote unquote red Megalodon's presence. Sounds kind of like a dumb question, right? I mean, with size as enormous as theirs, they, they would have consumed anything they stumbled upon, be it a huge shark, a whale, or plenty of sharks or plenty of whales, or numerous whales and sharks together. It's jaw still wouldn't be big enough to, you know, it'll just chew on whatever it caught and then just eat them instead of swallowing them whole, if it's big enough, actually. Okay, I could do that all day. But you guys, remember it this way. A megalodon could have easily finished a whale exactly the size of the adult killer whale in just five generous bites. If you happen to have any doubts, I've got this video to show you on how easy it was for the massive creature to grab a swimming whale. That is not a megalodon. At least by the looks of it, that is not a megalodon. Now, what made this all easier for megalodons? It was the widest jaw that contained 276 mega teeth with incredible bite force. I'm pretty sure no one doesn't know that megalodon has incredible bite force. The huge teeth made it one of the most fearsome predators to ever roam the oceans. While precise measurements are challenging due to the lack of living specimens. What do you mean living specimens? You know, how about something like a dinosaur's bite force? A Smilodon's bite force? What are you talking about, living specimens? Are you talking about actual great white sharks or something? Or extinct ones? Scientists have estimated that the Megalodon's bite force could have been in the range of 24,000 to 41,000 pounds per square inch. To put this in perspective, the great white shark, one of the largest contemporary predator sharks, has a bite force of about 1,800 pounds per square inch. This means the Megalodon's bite was significantly more powerful, enabling it to crush the bones and shells of its prey with ease. With a bite force this big, it should be expected. Anything, literally anything, could have fit inside those 3.4 meter wide jaws. Including a 100 story tall skyscraper. <laughs> There was a sighting in the year 2009 where a father, along with a son, spotted a stranded whale bitten in half. Wasn't bitten in half? Probably just died? I'm confident that this whale died in something else. The discovery was made off the coast of Hawaii and left the audience stunned. Now you might be wondering why I brought a half-eaten whale into the middle of the Megs. 
It's because the beached body of the whale showed an insane bite radius. The radius was enough to make the researchers realize who was the culprit behind this, as the whale was split in half with just one mighty bite. Yep, one bite was all it took for the predator to cleave the whale. Uh, okay, so the theory was that the blue whale was bitten by killer whales, not the megalodon, and even then it's a hoax or a misinterpretation of a different event. There is no concrete evidence for the whale to be bitten in half like this. As per the researchers, the predator responsible for such a feat would have needed considerably more strength than the typical sharks found in those waters. To put it in simpler words, it was just the megalodons who had the ability to do this sort of damage with only one bite. Also, that one bite claim was completely ridiculous. Not just the enormous size with mighty bite, but they likely used a combination of stealth, speed, power, and cooperative hunting. Okay, so sharks were mostly solitary animals. So I wouldn't be surprised if Megalodon was also a solitary animal. In fact, it is the most likely that Megalodon is a solitary animal instead of being a cooperative hunter. To capture and consume their prey. It likely relied on ambush tactics like lurking in the depths and surprising its prey from below, utilizing its immense size and power to deliver devastating bites. Cooperative hunting in groups, similar to modern sharks, again, sharks were mostly solitary animals, was another approach, allowing them to tackle larger prey efficiently. Their speed enabled them to chase down smaller, more agile prey. Lastly, scavenging on carcasses of large marine creatures also lay within their capabilities. Isn't that also a feat of... Have you ever heard of whale fall before? A lot of... Create a lot of these animals, organisms, whatever, they come in and feast on the whale corpse. Making them versatile hunters in the ancient oceans. Another thing that intrigued me while I was searching for these exalted creatures was the recent sightings. There have been numerous sightings of creatures resembling the long gone megalodons that even left the scientists scratching their heads. I agree that scientific consensus leans heavily towards their extinction millions of years ago. So why can't some people just obey science? There really is no way of convincing some people, you know. But there are still a few reasons to believe in their existence. First, the ocean is a vast and mysterious place, and we've only explored a small fraction of it. Ah. Okay, doesn't mean that the Megalodon is still around today. Who knows what could be hiding in the uncharted depths, right? Second, there have been some intriguing reports of giant, unidentified creatures in the ocean. That might just be whales, or even just sharks or killer whales, but not Megalodon. Now, these sightings, while not scientifically proven, fuel the speculation that maybe, just maybe, a few Megalodons survived somehow. Nope. Nope. Nothing. For instance, watch this clip captured off the Brazilian coast. On each side of the boat, what are those trails called? What side is swimming fast? The buddy? footage shows two massive sized creatures stalking the boat. They could just be swimming along or curious or something. By either way, it isn't Megalodon. There's no way it is Megalodon because Megalodon went extinct. They appear to be almost equal to the size of the boat itself. They might not be the megalodons, but we have to admit that there are bigger creatures that lurk in the depths of the oceans. Here comes the one that was captured in Japan's Suruga Bay in the year 2016. That looks really odd for a quote-unquote megalodon. I'm willing to bet this is not megalodon. The huge shark that got attracted by the bait remained unidentified for years until recently, where researchers identified it as a sleeper shark. Now, these sharks contain enormous sizes and an insane length of more than eight meters. See, this thing is not Megalodon, and it doesn't even look like a Megalodon at all. A resembling massive creature was recorded in the depths. Although the previous one was identified, this one remained anonymous, and researchers are still baffled to see the sight of this monstrous creature. From what I've seen, 
It kind of looks like a stingray. And a stingray is not a megalodon. Are you going to say that it is possibly a megalodon? Estimating the thing to be more than 15 meters long. Not just the sightings though. Here's an encounter where the Coast Guard were seen only a few inches away from what the people called a megalodonic creature. Why does everyone say that the megalodon still exists? The megalodon is extinct. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a petition that uh, calls for the reconsideration of the megalodon status from extinct to something else like critically endangered, which the megalodon is already extinct a long time ago. Dude, please stop. Another creature that was given a similar name was this one. A colossal shadow emerged. Colossal shadow, huh? Must be the shading issue. Beneath the surface, revealing an immense basking shark resembling a prehistoric creature. Oh, that isn't even a shadow. That isn't even a shadow. Look at it. Look at its textures. You can see its body textures clearly from this camera. What initially caused a stir on social media was the misconception that this basking shark, reaching up to 40 feet in length, was a megalodon. Which couldn't be farther from the truth. The basking shark looked nothing like a megalodon. Where, in fact, it wasn't. Here's another gigantic shark that was filmed so close to the fisherman. That is the shape of not a megalodon. First off. Now, megalodons may have gone extinct, but they did leave their exalted descendants. Yep, it's the great whites I'm talking about. The great white shark did not descend from the megalodon. I mean, great whites are kind of like the modern day version of Megalodon. How do you compare their lifestyles? You don't compare their lifestyles. Now, whether we're talking about millions of years ago or today, they remain the undisputed kings of the sea. Depends on what definition of king of the seas you meant. This video is clearly directed to two-year-old toddlers. Not just that. The two have a lot of similarities that relate them, even though they're not closely related. The one ultimate similarity is their diet. Both of these carnivorous apex predators are meat enthusiasts. What do you mean, mean enthusiasts? The megalodon is not supposed to be bloodthirsty. The neither is that basking shark thing or, or something, right? If I remember correctly, I honestly didn't really see it. But like... Any predator in general, they are not supposed to be bloodthirsty. What do you mean by mean enthusiast? meat enthusiast? Which helps them maintain a balance in the ecosystem. But great white sharks are not the only predators around. There are times when these ace predators taste their own medicine and they become the prey. It's usually the juvenile great whites. When great white sharks are young and smaller in size, they can fall prey to larger sharks, such as other great whites or larger species like orcas. You're talking about great whites, juvenile great whites, when the video is supposed to be about red megalodon being more dangerous than the megalodon. Quote unquote red megalodon, might you, because the red megalodon doesn't exist in real life. Orcas in particular have been observed hunting and killing great white sharks, even though such interactions are relatively rare. Overall, as adults, great white sharks face threats from natural predators. So, if majestic creatures like great white sharks can get eliminated from the waters, what exactly became the reason for the megalodon's demise? Might just be because of the changing ecosystem around it. And then the megalodon went extinct because it couldn't adapt to it very well. Because it's just too big. The megalodon possessed a distinct advantage with its elevated body temperature enabling it to achieve greater speed, withstand colder waters, and expand its habitat globally. You see, megalodons lived during a time called the Pliocene Epoch. They went extinct in the early Pliocene, and are you using some sort of Kurskis-Hakt video? About 5.33 to 2.58 million years ago, things were cooling down globally back then, and this change messed up the megalodon's groove. Sea levels shifted, and the megalodon struggled to adapt. 
Sustaining the elevated body temperature required the Megalodon to maintain an exceptionally high energy level. Now, Megalodon went extinct, not only because of the changing ecosystem, but also the climate around it. The In Plyus, in the Pliocene, the seas were getting cooler as the Earth got cooler, resulting in a voracious appetite. But with the changing ocean and maybe even competition from newcomers like the Great White Shark, it became a tough gig. Consequently, the Megalodon faced challenges that ultimately contributed to its extinction. See, you admit it again, the Megalodon is extinct. So let, they, let it stay that way. Some researchers have also speculated that unusual oceanic events or anomalies, such as massive underwater volcanic eruptions or shifts in ocean chemistry, could have played a role in the Megalodon's extinction. These events might have disrupted the food chain, affected prey populations, or even created inhospitable conditions for the Megalodon. You still haven't gotten to the title of the video, Why the Red Megalodon is More Dangerous Than the Megalodon. You know, to be honest, I don't think you could come up with a with any good reason because the red megalodon is not real. Early human populations living near coastlines might have occasionally encountered megalodons or their remains. While megalodons were formidable creatures and not easy prey, humans have historically hunted large marine animals for various purposes, including food, tools, and trophies. It's essential to note that while human activities may have had some impact, the Megalodon went extinct before humans existed, by the way. This video is so dumb, it's making me genuinely mad. They are unlikely to have been the primary cause of the Megalodon's extinction. Instead, these activities might have just added extra stress to an already declining population. There really is no words to describe how dumb these statements are. The Megalodon... Again, the Megalodon went extinct before humans even existed, before Homo erectus existed. Contributing to the overall challenges the Megalodon faced during its existence. Other than climatic factors that became the reason for their disappearance from the world, there was another reason that might have slightly contributed to their extinction. It was the colossal creatures themselves. Competition from some other animals, especially the Livyatan. It is believed that as megalodons grew larger, competition for limited food resources intensified, potentially leading to instances of larger individuals preying on smaller ones of their own species. Another reason behind the cannibalistic behavior might have been the endless hunger. Endless hunger. Okay, I see your point here. Megalodon is really huge and it needed a lot of food in order to stay okay so given an animal this large they probably wouldn't have to feast uh for a pretty long time before they have to go out to hunt again endless hunger seems a little bit ridiculous i mean either these apex predators were super hungry due to less prey around or were just being opportunistic when they began targeting their own kind but coming back to the point, this very cannibalism could have played a role in their eventual extinction. It could have contributed to a decline in the megalodon population, as individuals turned to cannibalism when other food sources became scarce due to changing environmental conditions. By the way, we're showing a lot of scenes that don't have megalodon. I know we're showing Great White Shark, but this, uh, the Great White Shark, the Great White Shark is the best source for Megalodon-esque build for a shark, but like, the Megalodon is more robustly built. This video should have had more Megalodon footages if it is obsessed with talking about Megalodon and not the quote-unquote Red Megalodon. Well, Megalodons weren't the only ones that ruled the water. There were other creatures who, although were not present in the same time, were powerful enough to knock down a giant-sized Megalodon. First on the list are Liviatan. Lifyatan, often referred to as the Leviathan Whale. It was a massive prehistoric sperm whale that lived roughly 12 to 13 million years ago. 
It reached lengths of up to 60 feet and was characterized by its enormous teeth, which could grow up to a foot in length. These teeth were designed for gripping and tearing apart prey, which often included large marine animals. I'm going to bring up the title again. This title is called 15 Reasons Why the Red Megalodon is 100 Times More Dangerous Than the Megalodon. And there are no 15 reasons now. You just lost track of them. And then you're now talking about Megalodon's competitors like Livyatan. This video is spiraling out of control. To envision how Liviatan could potentially win such a battle, one might consider its powerful bite force and its teeth designed for disabling and incapacitating prey. If Liviatan could strategically target and inflict damage on Megalodon's vital areas or limbs, it could potentially weaken the shark over time. Another advantage that this streamlined whale would have had was speed. Its streamlined shape and large flippers allowed it to move swiftly through the ocean. The Livyatan had enough advantages over the Megalodon for the Livyatan itself to win against the Megalodon. Particularly when pursuing prey or engaging in fast bursts of acceleration. On the other hand, Megalodon, while an incredibly powerful swimmer, had a bulkier build that was more adapted for endurance and brute force than for swift and nimble movements. So, if the two ever confronted each other, Liviatan would have easily won the game of life due to its agility and maneuverability. This is okay, but like, you're still being off topic. Then comes the great white sharks, which might have outcompeted their bigger megalodon cousins. Okay, so they might have coexisted with each other. The great white shark and the megalodon, the great white sharks. This is another okay point, I guess. It didn't really cause the megalodons to become extinct. There was still that delicate balance of the food chain. Now, I know that there's around a million years between both the predators. They actually coexisted with each other. And considering the massive size and stealth with which great white sharks hunt, if it was a group of great whites versus a single megalodon... Spoiler alert, great white sharks wouldn't really do that in groups. They probably would, like, mob attack the megalodon in mobs, maybe? There was a possibility of them finishing a megalodon in the confrontation. Another such fierce enemy of the megalodons would have been the Basilosaurus. The Basilosaurus did not coexist with the megalodon, and also the megalodon is bigger. At least six to seven times the size of the Basilosaurus? No way, man. Often referred to as the King Lizard. It was a marine reptile that had long fascinated scientists. The Basilosaurus is actually a descendant of whales, so... No, it was not a marine reptile, it was actually a mammal. The first Basilosaurus fossil, resembling a colossal eel measuring up to 65 feet, was unearthed in the 19th century. This formidable marine predator ruled the ancient seas approximately 34 million years ago. Although its preferred prey was whale meat, it is believed that with its immense size and power, it likely had the ability to take down sharks as well. But definitely not a megalodon. Now, imagine the clash of formidable megalodons and basilosaurus. They did not coexist with each other, and even if they did, the megalodon would win, like, a lot, because it's at least six to seven times the size of the basilosaurus. I know whatever really happened in reality, but if it did, the basilosaurus, with its sheer size, would have easily knocked off the megalodon. A 16 meter long megalodon has a mass of up to 48 tons. The megalodon would have an easier time pushing the basilosaurus around than the basilosaurus pushing the megalodon around. And if a basilosaurus could do it, the mosasaurus would have definitely done it. The mosasaurus was also smaller than the megalodon, and if you're saying that the mosasaurus did it, it would probably be the Jurassic World mosasaurus defeating a megalodon. But then the Mac comes in and just defeats the Mosasaurus. This marine reptile had a striking resemblance. I'm sorry, but this is not a Mosasaurus. To the former. The Mosasaurus thrived during the late Cretaceous period, roughly 70 million years ago, boasting a maximum length of around 56 feet. 
Armed with sharp teeth designed for gripping and a double-hinged jaw that allowed them to swallow prey whole, Mosasaurus was a formidable predator. If a real-life Mosasaurus and a real-life Megalodon came to battle, the Megalodon wins like 100% of the time. <laughs> Preying on marine reptiles, pterosaurs, and perhaps even land dinosaurs and other mosasaurs. Now, let's shift our gaze to the mighty Megalodon, an apex predator that roamed the oceans millions of years ago. Now, while the mosasaurus was undoubtedly a formidable predator in its own right, if these two ancient beasts had somehow encountered each other, they did not, because they both lived in completely different time frames. Nuff said. It would have been hard for the Meg to defend himself. Albicetus, the giant sperm whale. The total body length of it is around 5.9 to 6.3 meters. <sighs> okay. The Megalodon just was 1,000% of the time. That roamed the seas 15 million years ago in the Miocene period, hailed from the western United States, and had a fascinating history. Discovered in 1909 in Santa Barbara, these magnificent creatures were initially mistaken for marine walruses, a theory that was later debunked by scientific research. It also had some special features that made it different from other sea creatures of its time. It had a closed groove in its nose and teeth with a hard outer layer called enamel. Just show the restoration from Wikipedia made by Macro Fisiter. Now These features were unique and made it stand out among its fellow marine animals. Now, as for the question of how Albicetus might fare against the formidable Megalodon, I just want to add that an encounter between these two ancient giants, if it ever occurred, would have been a truly epic battle of prehistoric titans. No, that claim would be absolutely and utterly ridiculous. The Megalodon would win 2,000% of the time, as I said. With the outcome remaining a mystery lost to the depths of time. Cetotherium, the ancient whale beast, was a creature of immense size and surprising stealthy power. While it may not have matched the immense proportions of the Megalodon, what made Cetotherium intriguing was its unique adaptation and the power it wielded beneath the waves. Doesn't mean it can win against the Megalodon. I'm sorry, but the Cetotherium is just too small to deal with the Megalodon. If the Megalodon wins against whatever I mentioned 2,000% of the time, it would win against Cetotherium 10,000% of the time. Its ability to maneuver and stealthily hunt in its preferred surface waters made it a formidable predator in its own right, demonstrating that size alone did not dictate its success in the ancient seas. Speaking of potential Megalodon hunters, I mean, how can we forget about the giant Pacific octopus? Dude just shows the freaking Kraken! Oh my god! <laughs> I'm dying already. I'm dead. Um, I think the last of my brain cells have been rotten from this statement alone. Just look at its enormous size and elongated eight arms! This is from a freaking cartoon, as if it couldn't get any worse already. Ready to ensnare anything that dares come near it. If that's the case, how could it have left the Megalodon unharmed? Well, the Meg would have had the advantage of sharp, shark-like teeth. But take a look at this. The huge balloon it could form would be enough to obscure any predator's vision. Not to mention the secret inky weapon it hides. If it couldn't hunt the Meg, it surely would have given the massive prehistoric beast a hard time. No, this is the worst paleontology video. This is even worse than the bright side paleontology videos. Just look at how many of these ridiculous statements are there. I am, I am actually mad about this one. Even madder than the ones in bright side. Or to explain Americano, all these... We have a new uh, contender for the absolute worst paleontology video maker, but like, we've only watched one video from this guy, so I can't wait to see what sort of abominations this channel will come up next. I am speechless.